Hello, my name is Jan Wollstonecroft and I'm a research fellow based at the Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health at UCL. And today I'm going to quickly whiz you through some work that we did um, during the pandemic to understand the experiences of mothers caring for children with an intellectual disability and a rare genetic disorder. So we spoke to 23 mothers um, in around July 2020, so just as the first lockdown was ending. And we asked our parents to complete a short online survey and then we conducted qualitative interviews over the phone with them, which we then analysed with a reflective thematic analysis. The survey showed us that the impact of the pandemic was wide and varied. And to give you an idea of the level of vulnerability within this cohort, a quarter of our families were shielding. In terms of the impact on uh, mental health, we found that a quarter of our parents were reporting anxiety symptoms and most of the children were worried about being infected with COVID, less were concerned about their physical health. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom and some family, most families, uh, three quarters of our families reported at least one positive change as a result of the pandemic. So we analysed our interviews using a reflective thematic analysis and the three key themes that we developed were one of managing pre-existing challenges within a more challenging um, set of circumstances, having mixed emotions about the pandemic, but also a need for individualised and better tailored support. So many families felt that they were under extreme pressure in terms of managing um, their day to day lives, which were already complicated um, due to the level of care that they needed to um, deliver for their children. And that it was very complicated planning for complex needs within the context of a pandemic and that they were experiencing as many behavioural issues at home that they would be normally. But this time they had fewer resources to manage them. Some families explained that actually they felt left behind and if you go back to the news reporting at the start of the pandemic, there was very little coverage of how the pandemic was affecting families caring for children with intellectual disabilities. Overall, people had mixed emotions about the pandemic and the lockdown itself. In some regards, being at home was, happy, was a happy um, time for the children and their parents because it meant that they were less um, in engaging with um, activities or situations which could have been perceived as stressful um, and people enjoyed spending time together and slowing down. But for the children and families who were more sociable, they were really missing um, social interaction and found it difficult to not be able to interact with the rest of the world. And some families um, described strained relationships and there were analogies of pressure cookers about pressure building up because they weren't able um, to go out and see other people and do other things. And I suppose it's worth noting here that whilst parents were extremely resilient um, in the face of the challenges um, thrown at them, actually um, this came to the cost of their mental health and that was um, also picked up in the measures with a quarter of the parents having anxiety symptoms. What we also picked up was the idea that the support that families got really mattered. Most families um, would have regular checkups in hospital. Some of these were replaced by telephone calls and telehealth. And whilst that was suitable in some instances, it didn't quite work for the complexity of some of the children involved in the study. Um, so going forward, a hybrid model of face-to-face -face and telehealth might be the best thing for this cohort. Interestingly, families found that just quick check ins from services, you know, quick five minute phone calls every now and then rather than long extended um, interviews were more helpful um, and they found it really um, great when services could find the time to just check in and make sure that they were OK. In terms of schooling, um, most schools were able to provide children with laptops um, and so the equality of access to schooling through technology was fairly good throughout. However, what's lagging behind is the equity of access because the technology and the hardware is just a starting point. What we need to get better at is then adapting that content so that it is suitable for children with additional needs. And that's the work that still needs um, to be done and would need to be done again if there was another um, lockdown. So that's a good um, point for learning for future restrictions should they occur. So our interviews kind of show 
um, the breadth of the challenges that our families were experiencing and give us some idea of how we might best cope with a future pandemic.